Do you remember the freight boat called the Julia W. Bell? (laughs) Very well. Very well. I'll have to tell you, the first time I came to Elizabeth City, my father and I came on the Julia and Bell. Oh, really? Because back in those days, there was no overland transportation. And so my father got a pension from being in the Civil War, the Spanish-American War, and he got some back pay, and he got enough to, to build out on our house. So he came to Elizabeth City to get the material lumber for to build out on the house in Avon. So, uh, but I remember the Julian Bell very well. And about how old were you when you made that trip? Uh, I wasn't very old. I was probably about seven or eight years old. Do you remember it? Huh? Do you remember? Yeah, I remember. Uh, uh, like I said, I was first time I came to Lip City. I came on the Julian Bell. Uh, but the Julian Bell uh, was a freight boat. Freight okay. boat. Well, back in my days, like I said, the only way to get anything came in, there was no overland transportation. And the Julian Bell was one of the freight boats that it uh, went to come to Little City and got staples and other material, whatever. Like my father bought that lumber, and he they carried it to Avon. And the Julian Bell uh, was a boat. They said those boats were about 65 foot long. I mean, that somebody told me that. I I'm not good at guessing lengths, but 65 foot long. She had two masts and two main sails and a jib and a centerboard and also had steering equipment on her. And uh, she'd come to Little City like on Monday. She'd come to Little City to pick up the frame. We had drummers, which were salesmen, we called them drummers, would go to come to Avon and places and take orders for staples and so forth. And uh, so the Julian Bell was one of the ships. She was owned by Walker Scarver. And so, uh, like I said, that uh, she came to Elizabeth City on Monday, and on a, either a Wednesday or Thursday to go back to Avon. Well, back in those days, they didn't have a harbor at Avon. A boat would have to anchor two, three hundred yards offshore, and they would have to unload the material in small, small boats and bring it to the shore. And uh, <coughs> So when you and your dad came up to Elizabeth City to get the lumber, right, you had to spend the night here. Yeah, we, my father had a sister lives here, oh, and we spent the night with her. And they used to have a, a boat. You could go from Elizabeth City to Mario. They called the Trenton, which is a boat that carried passengers. And we uh, went back uh, to Mario and the Trenton and spent the night. And the next morning we got up. And, and got on the mail boat. We got on the mail boat. It was just just after daylight, <laughs> and the wind was blowing a gale from the southwest. And it took us all day long to get to Avon. And just the, the sound was so rough about everybody on there got seasick. <laughs> Those freight boats got staples, and the Julian Bell stopped at Rodanthe. Well, back then they didn't have a post office in what is now Waves, but he stopped there because a man had AC Gray owned a grocery store for what is waves now. And he's also at Avon, uh, just, I mean Salvo, and then he'd come to Avon. And he'd, he'd drop off the freight at all those villages. And uh, back in those days, I don't think there was no uh, no uh, <coughs> overland transportation, and that's the only way people get there. If you went somewhere, you went, went on a boat, and came back on a boat, yeah. There was no well, overland transportation. When you took the Julia Bell from Avon to Elizabeth City, how long did that take? Well, I tell you what, we left probably about 7 o'clock in the morning, and I imagine it about 5 or 6 we got here. It took us just about all day long. Okay. Yeah. And, but and, we had a good breeze. <laughs> and I'll tell you something else I remember about the Julia Bell, and maybe it'll, things will keep coming to me. Uh, the Julia Bell had a water keg just in front of the cabin. And and Walker, you know where he got his water from? Out of the Passatank River. I remember oh. uh, I remember when we came up here, as soon as we got in the river, he took a bucket and got uh, got water out of the, out of the Passatank River and filled up that, that tank, yeah. And did it taste good? 
Yeah, a little uh -huh. fresh water there, uh -huh. but it's not that way anymore. Yeah. Oh, it isn't? No, yeah. Very brackish now, all together. Oh. They had a cabin, and they had a stove in there to cook on, and they heat on heat in the winter time, I guess, and had bunks in there for them to sleep on. I, I think they had about four bunks, and then when they'd come to Liberty City, uh, they'd stay aboard those boats. They wouldn't go to a motel or a hotel, oh, okay. but they'd stay aboard those boats, and they did their cooking and whatever. Okay, so so the crew on the boat, they didn't have to come to a boarding house. Oh, that's anything. right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, Walker had a, a sort of a, a mate named Abby Hooper that, that went with him to help him out. But uh, he needed somebody to, when he put those sails out, see, they, they, they kept the sails, they didn't keep the, when the boat wasn't, operating. They didn't keep the sails like they did when the boat was running. They tied them up around the mast and so forth.